Hello guys and welcome to this special episode, a transfer special episode in this FIFA 16 career mode with Manchester United. This is purely transfer news, this is me putting offers in for players, uh, receiving offers for players and I'll, I'll be looking at what other clubs do as well in the, the news reels and stuff. So looking, searching for players, Pogba. stuff like that I'm going to be adding to my shortlist you can see my shortlist as well in this episode uh, another one is going to be Aubameyang I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it if you know how to pronounce it feel free to correct me in the comment section below more knowledge the better Verratti obviously I'm a big fan of Verratti as well so either Pogba or Verratti, not both though, because you don't need both really. One would miss out, it'd probably be Verratti to be honest. So then asking 61.5 million for Gareth Bale. I think my first bid for Bale was 40 million because th it says their value 39 million, but they're asking for 61.5, so I'm going to offer them 60 dead on 60 million they might accept that I think they might accept that I know it's a lot of money on one player and I could have offered a trade as well but if you keep doing that then your team becomes silly to be honest and I like I, I like keeping the players I've said in previous episodes I like keeping the players that you start the season with so they can pick up the medals at the end if you are to win anything that is um, the vast Spurs have indicated they want 40 million for him. Yeah, that's fair, I think, for Christian Eriksen, 40 million. But that would be all the money gone because we've got about 102 million, I think, or just over 102 million. Well, 90 to 102 million. So if we buy Bale and Eriksen, that's all the transfer money gone. Uh, Jack Butland, transfer unacceptable, and Slatan has accepted. I'm going to have to stall that one though because I want to get a striker in this transfer window whereas Latin Ibrahimovic will be joining the team next season in the summer next season in the summer on a free transfer and hopefully we'll be in real life as well Laporte, they want 34 million for Laporte and as I've said before this is probably the most important signing we need a defender although our defence has been fantastic in this game this season. We've only let in six goals in the Premier League with Blind and Smalling and Jones and Blind and Jones and Rojo. So the defence have been good, but I'd prefer to have a marquee name and a young defender like Laporte who is really good next to Chris Smalling. Laporte and Smalling would be a fantastic pairing. I've used it before in previous career modes as well and it is really good. So this is the negotiations, I've put bids in for Ibrahimovic, Bale, Laporte, Butland to offer the transfer, I'm going to give them, it's worth 13 million to 16 million, I think I'm going to be a bit generous here and offer them Valdez and 10 million, so there's no way they could say no to that, Valdez is worth quite a bit of money as well, I forgot I didn't see how much Valdez is worth so I think that he's been very generous. 10 million plus Valdez for Jack Butland. Lukaku also wanted to bring him in. I tried to get him on loan first and I'm offering um, Marwan Fellaini. Offering Marwan Fellaini up as part of the deal as well. See if he wants to go back to Everton or if they want him back there. Marwan Fellaini and 25 million. I think that's a very good deal. In between 26.1 million and 30.9 million. Marrow and Flaney and 25 million. Be good if we could get Lukaku in. He's a very good player, strong, fairly quick, good feet, and he's good in the air as well. I accept that, so we get Zlatan Ibrahimovic in. Actually, I'm going to reject it for now. I'm going to try and stall it. I'm going to stall it for now and try and get Lukaku in first and foremost. 
and Christian Eriksen has been accepted so we can now offer Eriksen a contract as well he wants 140,000 per week which is quite steep to be honest for a 23 year old he's a very good player I like playing with Christian Eriksen he's a crucial first team player for Tottenham he would be, he would be an important first team player Gareth Bale wants 200,000 a week and I'm going to offer him 4 years I like to give him 4 or 5 years not 3 years 4 or 5 years and that'll see him to his 30 and he'll be a crucial player for United obviously and if you've seen my previous episodes then you'll know what happens with Gareth Bale and Laporte and all these other signings that I'm trying to make John Stones and Chamberlain are probably going to make them in the summer I'm probably not going to get them in in this transfer window and we'll look at Delhi Ali here as a cheaper alternative to Ericsson same club, plays in the same role he's four years younger his over is a bit lower but he's still got time to grow he's also English and he's, as I said he's cheaper he only cost 12 mil. they only want 12 million for him which is good for a young English midfielder and Deli Ali. I've not actually used him yet, so this would be a first for me. And I hear good things about him. So Renato Sanchez played against him. He played. He scored against us home and away for Benfica in the group stage of the Champions Cup, and he looked very good. And United were actually scouting him in real life, and they were close to getting him before Bayern Munich snapped him up. One of the hottest prospects in Europe at the moment, Renato Sanchez. Angel Correa, I wanted to get him as well because I haven't played using him yet either. I'm going to put in for Andy Carroll because if we can't get Romelu Lukaku, I'm going to scout him first. If we can't get Romelu Lukaku, then I want Andy Carroll because he provides a different option. I've said in the previous episodes it's a different option. He's a target man, he can win the ball, he's an aerial threat. Uh, he's English, 27, he's going to be a cheaper alternative to Lukaku as well. English, 27 year old, and I can bring him on and provide a different option for the team because we haven't got many players. I think we've only got Fellaini in that mould, in that sort of target man uh, mould. I'm going to try and get him on loan first with a future fee of 10 million. I don't know how much he's worth there. He hasn't been scouted for some reason. Whereas you'd expect all the Premier League players to be scouted if you're based in England, you'd expect them to start from the Premier League. Most scouts must be slacking, to be honest. He wants ninety thousand and four years for Jack Butler. That'll take him to twenty-six. Uh, he's not going to be a crucial first-team player for us. He's going to be a squad rotation player. Yeah, squad rotation player is going to be. Uh, he's going to be a good backup to De Gea, which means we can let Romero go. Uh, Valdez is going as part of the deal. We can let Sam Johnston go out on loan as well. And have Butland as a backup to David De Gea, also an English player. Butland probably shouldn't, should have offered less than 10 million first, but there we go. Jack Butland comes in. And still trying to get Almeric Laporte. He'll be in our starting lineup. As well, behind the scenes, I am trying to, I am transfer listing players and making them available for loan, to try and get some players out so I can get players in, so I can get more players in because I probably won't sign, I probably won't sign Ericsson, Bale, and Laporte, which should be fantastic. But I'm probably not going to get all three of them in this transfer window, if at all. And Gareth Bale's first to accept, and that's 60 million gone now, so we've only got around 40 million left, and that's where Ericsson comes in. But I'm going to stall that a sec to see if we get Deli Ali instead. Uh, I'll put another bid in for Slavtan, I'm going to have to let that go for now, and probably come back in for him later because I want to try and get a striker this transfer window for this season. Jack Butland accepts, so that's two signings made. Uh, Christian Eriksen, I'm going to have to, I can't accept it, so I'm going to have to stall that one again. 
So we've got Jack Butland and Gareth Bale. Uh, Gareth Bale, Welsh, British. You see there, Barcelona trying to get Boateng. Gareth Bale's Welsh, so he's British, and Jack Butland's English, so I'm having an English slash British core to the team. Uh, I'm a report, I haven't got the money to bring him into the club at the moment. And I have tried everything to get him into the club. I've even tried uh, doing the transfer takeover where you get more money, but for some reason it hasn't given me in this transfer window. It'll probably give it me for the next transfer window now, which will end up being wasted if it goes to the next season. So that was a waste, really, of points, FIFA points or wherever they are, club points. Deli Ali only wants 50,000 a week for four years, so that's much cheap. That's like 90,000 less than what Christian Eriksen was asking. So we've put in a deal for a uh, pending a deal for Deli Ali. We've had an offer for Ander Herrera there. 15 million is not a bad offer. 14.5 million, 15 million is not a bad offer to go and join Monaco. But I don't want to see Herrera leave the club. I do like Herrera. I'd like him as a player in real life as well. And Deli Ali signs. So that's three signings made now. Still can't bring Laporte in. And he's probably the main one we needed. He's probably the, the signing that we needed to make, if any, despite our defensive record. Being so good. I can't I can't get Laporte. It's gonna have to be a summer signing. And realistically we would be able to get Laporte because Atletico Bilbao aren't in the Champions Cup anymore. Whereas Gareth Bale would have been in the Champions Cup still with Real Madrid so that's unrealistic in that sense but we wouldn't get Gareth Bale in the summer in real life either to be honest and because we didn't spend in the summer because I disabled the first transfer window a lot of the big clubs are spending big and getting big players big name players in in this window it wouldn't normally happen in January transfer window but because They've still got all that money left over from the summer. A lot of teams are, uh, are spending it now, basically. Just looking through the successful negotiations there, and half of them were made from by Louis van Gaal in the summer. So that's why I disabled the window, because we already bought in a lot of players. And I wanted to, uh, to test them before I sold them on to make my own team. I wanted to give them a chance first. Uh, I put another bid in for Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, for next season. I'm going to have to give up on the Laporte as well, I think. I can't I can't do anything with Laporte. I haven't got enough money. I need to sell a few players to bring them in. Uh, Andy Carroll. I don't know if this is a loan or a boy. Oh, it's a, that's to boy. I think I offered Fellaini to West Ham as well and they accepted that. They accepted that I still haven't got enough money to bring him in. I know that's over the maximum squad limp, so I do need to let somebody go. I know I can sack people, like uh, buy out their contract, but I don't really want to be doing that. But I could have brought Andy Carroll in there. He'd only be on the bench anyway though, so... So as you can see, it's the last four hours of transfer deadline day. I would have got more in, but for some reason I didn't record it and not a lot has happened up until now to be honest so this is the business end of the transfer deadline day as you can see there the latest deals Luis Gustavo has gone from Wolfsburg to Atletico Madrid Bernard has gone to Torino from Shakhtar Donetsk and Verratti has gone from PSG to Arsenal and Arsenal have also got Paul Pogba they sold Ozil to Bayern Munich and Paul Pogba and Marco Verratti have gone to Arsenal so they're crying out for two defensive midfielders that are strong and now they've got two of them they got rid of a creative midfielder in Ozil and got in two defensive midfielders and Paul Pogba is fantastic as well he's good on the ball and he can create so that's a good deal I think Paul Pogba and Marco Verratti and they're actually on my short list as well which it, Arsenal are going to be good in the midfield, Marco Verratti and, and Paul Pogba. I'm just looking at alternatives, cheaper alternatives to Laporte now. So I've looked at um, Matteo from Barcelona, he's a left-sided centre-back, left-footed. So he might be a bit cheaper as he's a bit older. This is... Uh, Jeremy Matteo 
Matthew had pronounced some alternatives to that left centre back spot. Doesn't look like we're going to get the port in because it's 34 million. We haven't got 34 million. We need to allow some players to leave or go out on loan. Uh, so I'm going to look at some loan Jeremy, Matthew, 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 Jeremy, Matthew, however you say it. My French isn't that good. I've only done it in secondary school to be honest. And I forgot more than I know. Mitchell Dykes. Uh, he's actually a left back but he's been moved into the centre at Ajax at the moment. Uh, left centre back is tall, young, another cheap alternative to Laporte. So if we looks like we can't get Laporte in, I'm going to try for one of these two. I have used uh, Matthew in Ultimate Team and he's okay but I do prefer Laporte and uh, he's also 32 years of age so I prefer the younger players. I think Laporte and Smalling would be, well, I've used it before, it is a good combination, a good centre-back pairing. But Mitchell Dykes might do the same job for a lot less. I've, I have put players on the transfer list, I have tried to sell them but I haven't got many offers. I've only got two offers, one for Herrera and one for Phil Jones. I don't really want to see those players go. I don't want to see any players go really other than Rojo and Fellaini and maybe Ashley Young and Valencia, other than that like Schweinsteiger, Carrick, Mata, they started the season as United players and I'd like them to finish the season as United players and hopefully pick up a medal or that's if we win a trophy, it looks like we're going to win the league though to be honest because we're running away with it at the moment, but I'd like them to stay the whole season at the club and then maybe move them on in the summer. And the reason being, as I've probably already said, I've had to redo this bit of commentary because for some reason it was cut short. But as I've already said, the reason teams are spending big now is because they didn't spend in the summer because of disabled first transfer window. Because as you've seen, uh, the transfer nego negotiations also included, the successful ones also included Lou Van Hal signing in the summer. Lou Van Hal signings in the summer, so I wasn't a part of that. That's why I disabled the window because we'd already bought players in and I wanted them to have a chance at the club before selling them. And it gets a bit silly when you're moving players around too much. And the January transfer window is never normally this busy, it's just the fact that I disabled the first window in the summer. Now I have tried everything to get Laporte in as well, I even tried that takeover thing where you get more money for FIFA points, FIFA club points, but for some reason it'll give it me for the next transfer window or the next season, so it's pretty much wasted. Which is a shame, but it's not the end of the world. Because United, we're, we're going to get some money for finishing high up in the league anyway. Still trying to buy an Andy Carroll there, but I think my squad's over the limit, so that's why I'm not getting any deals done anymore. We've made three signings, I don't think we're going to make any more to be honest, unless an offer comes in for a player I will allow to leave, like Schweinsteiger, Carrick, I will allow them to leave, one matter, I will allow them to leave if a good off, a good enough offer comes in. Obviously I want to get rid of Fellaini and Rojo as well. Actually I can't get rid of Rojo now because I haven't got a left centre back to replace him. So at the moment he's a backup to he'll have to be my backup to Daily Blind and Daily Blind's gonna have to be my my uh my main left centre back. Daily Blind and Chris Smalling's gonna be my main pairing. Ozil's gone to Bayern. Uh Atletico Madrid get Luis Gustavo. So there are some big uh big name players going to big name clubs. You can see there Verratti and Pogba have gone to Arsenal. Ozil's left Arsenal. There's a move from Shakhtar Donetsk in there as well to Torino, I think it was. And uh, there's also 
I think I saw Karim Benzema going to Manchester City as well, which is another big signing. Karim Benzema. Real Madrid have sold Bale and Benzema, so they're going to have a lot of money. <laughs> but a weaker squad, so... Yeah, they have Man City signed Karim Benzema. So Ozil's gone. I think Hazard and somebody else were rumoured to be going somewhere as well. Godogan was meant to be going somewhere. Jasper sillison has gone to AC Milan. Dutch goalkeeper for Ajax. I'm surprised he's gone. He's a good goalkeeper. Uh, another offer for, for Phil Jones. Probably should have accepted that in hindsight. That's not a bad deal. 14.5 million. Probably should have accepted that. And we probably could have got in Mitchell Dykes then. But he's he'd still be... Uh, he's, he's less OVR than Blind and Rojo. So he'd be on the bench in a way. Or maybe not even on the bench. So that looks like it's going to be the last hour of the transfer deadline day. There's top deals you can see there. Pogba, Ozil and Bale. So that looks like the end of it. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, take care and goodbye. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.